Hi, and welcome back to the Dr. Ramsey Show. Today, I'm going to talk about testosterone replacement therapy and men and the safety, etc. And what I want to share is I do treat men and women with hormone replacement therapy. And if I were to treat a male, let's say with a cream, his dosage is going to be 400 milligrams a day. A female's dose is going to start between five and 10. So that's the difference when it comes to dosing. If it's an injection, men do 200 milligrams injected twice a week, where women do 0.25 once or twice a week. And then with pellets, women get one to two commonly, where men start with 10 up to 15. So you can see that men and women get very different dosages for testosterone. So what I'm going to read to you um, is called Adam, Androgen Deficiency of the Aging Male, a Guide to Diagnosis and Treatment um, of Testosterone Replacement Therapy. Okay, a steady decline in androgen levels occur in males as they age. Evidence suggests that this decline may be at least partially responsible for a variety of physical and mental challenges associated with the aging process. For instance, abnormally low levels of androgens can lead to a profound changes in bone density, body composition, as well as sexual and cognitive function. Testosterone replacement has been shown to produce improvements in many of these areas. However, this practice is not without risks, both proven and theoretic. We'll get to those soon. Also, the diagnosis of androgen deficiency and the decision to treat is not always straightforward. The purpose of this article is to familiarize the clinician with the issues associated with androgen deficiency in the aging male. The clinical symptoms of androgen deficiency, as well as the risks and benefits of androgen replacement, will be discussed. This should help clinicians better identify those patients in whom testosterone replacement therapy should be considered. So what I wanted to share with you is the risks. Fluid retention, which I see maybe in my females, maybe 5% of the time, we treat it well. Gynecomastia or man boobs occurs only if men are taking the commercially available testosterone, which is my female dose. Because in that low dose of testosterone, like I said in the very beginning, converts into estrogen, which men feel as breast tissue, that subcutaneous fat. If men take enough testosterone, it burns the subcutaneous fat. Men never get man boobs under my care ever. And <laughs> I give men estrogen on top of that. Why would I give men estrogen on top of that oral estradiol to reduce plaque in their arteries to their heart? to treat prostate cancer, and to reduce BPH or benign prosthetic hypertrophy. Um, okay, risks, fluid retention, gynecomastia, which is boobs, excessive elevated red blood cells. Well, guess what? Men will always have elevated red blood cells, hemoglobin and hematocrit. These are oxygen carrying red blood cells. They are never risky. Doctors say that it's thick blood. What makes blood thick are platelets, not red blood cells, not hemoglobin, not hematocrit. It's rich blood. Men can donate blood. Men do donate blood. Not all men donate blood. And the reason they do is because of the one side effect, which is a sun-kissed look, like they've been in the sun. Men don't like it. They donate blood. They like it. They don't donate blood. There's no risk in not, and there's no risk in, in donating. Um, Exacerbate sleep apnea. I've never heard that, seen that, read that. Benign or malignant prostate disease. Testosterone does not cause prostate disease. In fact, men who take testosterone have much lower risk, significantly lower risks than men who don't take testosterone of prostate cancer. Um, men have lower risks of BPH who take testosterone compared to men who don't. Same as prostate cancer. We just said that. Um, and then the last one is the increased risk of heart disease. I'm not sure how this could be. The muscle, the, our muscles love testosterone. They get stronger, more oxygen. Our heart's a muscle. Our heart needs testosterone. Testosterone heart health. There's so many articles on how much testosterone prevents heart disease. So I'm going to read the rest of what was in this article. Well, concerns of cardiovascular disease are theoretical and based on observations. However, in epidemiological studies, low testosterone levels are more predictive of heart disease than high levels 
in men. Our studies show that testosterone is vasodilatory um, and anti-ischemic, meaning it prevents heart disease. Testosterone in men improves rather than worsens atherosclerotic lipid profiles, high cholesterol on blood work. So I don't know the risks. In their article, they stated they're really not risks and low testosterone is a risk. So, and I haven't seen an article where giving testosterone to men or women is risky for the heart. I never have seen it and I hope I never do. So thank you for listening. I'm passionate about this. I appreciate you um, being passionate about it too. Share this with men who are fearful of testosterone because they fear it's going to cause prostate cancer, heart disease, or elevated red blood cells, whatever that risk is. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day. We'll be back next week. Thank you.